Welcome to part 3 of the Mini Golf Marble Machine build. In this video, I'll be finishing one of the four tracks as well as showing how I built a loop. There's quite a lot to cover before getting to the loop, so let's jump right in. Going off a previously built section, I cut and place all the pieces for the next hole. This piece has a tiny shim attached to it, so when glued on, the path will slope downwards. Using techniques shown in previous videos, I cut, assemble, and place the hole. I always test as I go to make sure it's working correctly. The end-to-end -end connection here was not sturdy enough, so I added a support beam underneath. The marbles will exit the hole and go straight to the loop, but in order to know how large the loop will be, I need to build the hole that comes directly after it. Now that I have this guy in place, I can calculate um, how high the loop's going to be. So I'm going to do that by finding the distance in height between here and here, and we'll go from there. So this guy is about three and just under three and a half, so we'll say that's three and a half. And then this guy is at nine, so that gives us about five and a half inches between here, between the height, uh, where it exits here, and the top of this. All right, now that we know that our height of our loop is five and a half inches, and if you do a little re research online, you'll find out that the formula for the height of a loop to have zero slipping um, is the height um, is equal to two and a half times the radius. So um, we can use that to calculate the radius. So do, 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 do. we've got uh, 5.5 .5 over Two and a half equals r, and that comes out to 2.2 .2 is equal to r. Um, so the height of our loop would be um, uh, da, 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 r d 2.2 .2 times 2 equals d, which is 4.4. Now, that's in a perfect world. And clearly, what I'm working with is not a perfect world, so I'm going to cut that down to two and a quarter. I'm going to cut it back to about half of it, so um, I'm actually going to use, uh, not two and a half, I'm going to use actually, yeah, equals 2.5 times D. <laughs> so that's the formula that I'm going to use to calculate that, so D is actually going to be 2.2, .2, but I'm gonna add, make it to about 2.25. So, just to make it easy for measurements and stuff. So let's do that. I've got some leftover birch from a bar cabinet that I built, and some nice sturdy wood. It's nice and solid, it's gonna be really nice for the marbles to roll on. So, I'm going to use this leftover piece and cut it up into three parts, so the first part it's going to be, that's a broken pencil. First part is going to be uh, the curve into the first quarter of the loop. And then the second part will be the top of the loop. And then the third part will be the end of the loop. So I can easily um, 
have the first part be straight, and then the top of the loop will be angled like this, going like this, and then the third part will be next to it, catching the ball and letting it go. I used a circle guide to trace the correct size. The two and a quarter diameter I calculated is for the inner diameter of the loop. This type of wood is more difficult to cut on the scroll saw. It's definitely possible, just takes a bit more time. Okay, now I've got my bottom piece and I've got my top piece here. They'll fit together like this. Um, actually, it'll be more, the top piece will be more at an angle. So that way the bottom piece can come from here and uh, let the models keep going. Now I can test to see if it works. So let's put it together. And if I put the marble at the height that it will be, I can see the this piece will be actually a little bit lower uh, than here, but if I test it at this height, it will definitely work. So let's put the marble here, put it rub it down, and it works. <laughs> okay, so now I can move on to the next part. The last piece to cut from the hardwood is the last part of the loop. I've got all three pieces cut out, and now I can slowly put them together. So I can, you can see that I've made the tops of the bottom and the two bottom halves at the same height. So that way, when this guy sits on top of them, it's not wonky on either direction. And normally, I use um, a quarter inch ply or just kind of this quarter inch uh, square dowel for the barriers. But in an effort to get these two guys as close together as possible, I'm going to use an eighth of an inch barrier. So when this guy sits on top, it looks like something like that. So there's the loop. Once I find a sweet spot where the three pieces fit together nicely, I glue it down with an excess amount of glue. I move on to the first stage of sanding and keep an eighth inch spacer in between the two bottom parts so everything stays properly aligned. For now, I'm mainly focused on smoothing out the portions that will be in direct contact with the marbles. The end has to have a curve on it to line up flush with the hole. With the basic structure of the loop complete, I cut and place two support pillars that will hold up the loop, and add small supports to those supports. Now I can build the real slope into the loop, so I figure out an angle that gives a steep enough drop and cut out a portion of the loop piece to match the desired angle. For the drop, I use a 3 quarter inch square piece of wood that matches the thickness of the rest of it. First, I do a rough cut to make it easier to work with. Then mark and cut it for real. The top is just slightly sloped downward, and I round off the top edge for a smooth roll. The next step I take is to build the barriers around the loop to keep the marbles from flying away. First, I measure mark and cut all the pieces.
Here they are before trimming down. The middle piece was definitely the most complicated. It was marked on both sides because it was a barrier for either side of the loop. I flipped it over as I cut so I would not overshoot my marks. The other pieces were easier to do because they were only guarding one side. I made sure not to cut out too much because the fine tuning would be done when sanding. An issue that I had to solve was with the bits that extended into the track. They created an obstruction that could keep the marble from doing the loop smoothly. So I glued on pieces to make it a bit wider and sanded it down to eliminate the obstruction. Before gluing on the problem piece, I ran a test while it was in place. With all the barriers attached, I could continue sanding. <laughs> my downdraft table was definitely my best friend during all of this. It kept my shot from getting too dusty. There were still a few places where I had to bulk out the barrier in order to sand it smooth. As you can see, it took quite a bit of sanding to make it look nice. Hopefully after a bit of filler and a coat of paint, it will look like one solid piece. When I was finally finished with this piece, I installed it on the machine. With the loop installed, the first track was nearly complete. The only thing left to do was attach the barrier around the hole and the small bits of track before and after the loop. This will wrap up part 3 of the mini golf marble machine construction. As you'll see in just a second, the marbles can make it all the way through the loop and back to the bottom. With one track down, only three to go.